I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. Right now, I'm just back from a tough one in the Middle East, and I'm looking forward to a couple of days of nothing but loafing. Hi, Steve. Ah, Mr. Bad News himself. Hi, Jim. Looks like you've been taking things kind of easy. Yeah, for all the two minutes. I suppose you and the commissioner are going to fix that up. Oh, no, the commissioner sent me over here to give you a hand, Steve. Well, that was nice of him. A black one. A bu you mean the black hand? The mafia? You hit it, pal. You know what that outfit stands for in Italy and Sicily? Terrorism, murder, violence? Yeah, you don't mean you and the commissioner want me to tackle an outfit like that. The commissioner doesn't expect you to stamp out the whole outfit, Steve. He's only interested in stamping out their most recent activity. What's that? They hired themselves out to terrorize the Italian voters. Keep the independent vote away from the polls. Oh, I see. They're doing a pretty thorough job of it, too. Right now, it's only on a local basis. But if it keeps up, national elections can ultimately be influenced, even controlled. Yeah, sounds pretty bad, but what's that got to do with us? Simply that this little enterprise has been financed from right here in the United States. Well, yeah? Who's doing it? We don't know but apparently Lorenzo does. Lorenzo? That's the pen name of an Italian political commentator and writer. Oh, yeah. I think I read an article about him. He's uh, here in the United States now, isn't he? The past two weeks, on what he calls a vacation. Apparently, he remains anonymous behind the name of Lorenzo for reasons of personal safety. But we happen to know that he's working on this Black Hand affair. They follow the lead here from Italy, trying to find the names of the men that are financing this operation. How's he doing? Well, we think he succeeded, but he won't tell us. Why not? Remember, he's made a career out of scooping everybody. Now, he leaves for Italy this afternoon. We think that he's going to wait until he gets there and make a headline out of this information. Yeah, <laughs> looks like he's asking for trouble. He is. There have been two attempts on his life already. Now, we can't force him to reveal this information, and he's welcome to his headlines if he lives to write them. That's where you come in, Steve. Oh. Bodyguard the guy all the way to Italy, huh? Sounds like a tall order. The fact that he doesn't want a bodyguard makes it even taller. You can't let him know that you're on the job. <laughs> all right. What time does he shove off? His plane leaves at 3 o'clock this afternoon. He arrives at La Half tomorrow morning, takes the Rome Express to Italy. That's it, Steve. He's your baby. Good luck. Thanks. And Steve. <laughs> take it easy, huh? <laughs> That afternoon at 3, I'm at the airport. Flight 26 is loading. I watch the passengers climb aboard and wonder which one of them is going to try and give me a hand on this deal. The kind of a hand I don't want, the one that's black and has mafia written on it. Signor Gramati. That's seat number 6, Mr. Gramati. Yes, sir. Uh, Lorenzo. Uh, number 8. Thank you. My name is Howard Matson. My friends all call me Tex. You can call me Tex, too, honey, bug, because I'd sure like to count you as one of my friends. All right, Mr. Masson, that's seat number 20 for you. Thank you. Mitchell, Steve Mitchell. Oh, yes, Mr. Mitchell, we've been expecting you. The party you inquired about is in the seat next to you. That's seat number seven. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, smoke? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's a new one on me. Oh, they are Italian cigarettes. I prefer American brands, but I don't want to cultivate the habit of smoking them. They are too expensive in Rome. Oh, you're from Rome, huh? Yes. Uh, my name is Lorenzo. And you? Steve Mitchell, a New Yorker on a Roman holiday. Well, you are taking the Rome Express out of Paris? That's right. Well, we shall be traveling together then. I hope so. Oh, perhaps we can play a little gin rummy to pass the time. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Lorenzo, but uh, I don't know how to play gin rummy. In fact, I don't know how to play any kind of cards. You are kind, senor. Not at all. Would you mind telling me what that's going to be? A, a pair of socks. I once crippled an entire division. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Gramati is in the lounge. Would you care to sit down? Well, I'll take a rain check. Oh, senor, if you wish to exchange seats, it will be all right. Thank you, Mr. Gramati. Oh, you, you know my name. Yes, the lady mentioned it. Uh, I am honored. Uh, perhaps we can have a chat before we reach Paris, hmm? I hope so. Excuse me. Uh, your pardon. Hello, Joe. You want some... Something wrong? No, New York's trying to get through, but I can't read him. Yes, this is flight 26, but I can't read you. Over. Who? Mitchell? Mm, no. Ask him if they want Steve Mitchell. Is his name Steve? Yeah, that's the one. I'll get him for you. Hang on, New York. We'll get him for you. Mr. Mitchell, I have a radio phone call for you. Thank you. He'll be here in a minute. Mr. Mitchell? Yeah. New York wants to talk to you. I can hardly hear what they're saying, but it sounds like some guy named Jim something. Jim Fletcher? It could be. Like I say, the reception's lousy. Flight 26 calling New York, over. Here's Mr. Mitchell. Okay, you're on. Just push to talk, release to listen, and forget the over business. Okay. Hello? Steve? Yeah, Jim. I can hardly hear you. I'll talk a little louder. We just had a flash of a new development on the case. It seems that whoever after him is on that plane with you. Hey, I can hardly hear him. Can you do something about this thing? Oh, hang on a minute. I'll see if I can clear it. Hold on, Jim. I can hardly hear you. What you say, Steve? Yeah, that's right. Hey, Jim. Okay, can you hear me? Clear as a bell. All right, start from the beginning, will you? I said there was a new development on the case. We're certain that an attempt will be made to kill a certain party before that plane reaches Paris. Any idea who'll make it? Yes, we're almost positive. Hey, Jim. Jim. Sorry, Mr. Mitchell. Looks like I gummed up the works. Yeah, but good. How long will it take you to fix that squawk box? Now I can't fix it till we get to Paris. Oh, you know that without even looking, huh? Yeah. How long have you been operating one of these? Well, it was my first trip with this one, but I've been an RO for three years. Uh -huh. And you know enough about it to short it out any time you want to, huh? I don't get you. I'll skip it. What's your name? Joe Smith. Where are you from, Joe? Little Rock. You ever been to Italy? No, I've never been to Italy. And you can lay off the questions. Look, I tried to help you, and I flubbed it. I'm sorry. OK, Joe, skip it. Arabidechi. Arabidechi. Joe, for a boy from Little Rock, you understand Italian pretty well. So far, I've gotten a lot of breaks, all bad. I'd have given a lot to hear the next word Jim was going to say. Now, practically everybody on the plane except Lorenzo could qualify as a suspect. 
It could be Gramati. He's definitely Italian. Then there's his elderly neighbor, but that idea seems pretty far-fetched, which leaves Joe Smith, who understands Italian and who cut me off intentionally or otherwise, just when Jim was giving me the name of my boy. Matson, the touring Texan, there's nothing to implicate him except his Texas accent keeps slipping. So my suspect list is wide open. I decide to keep my eyes the same way. I'm not worried as long as Lorenzo is beside me, but pretty soon that changes. I wish to enter the radio. Certainly. You are sure this cannot be repaired in time for me to send a message? Clark, I told you a dozen times now. But how can this be? Well, if you'd have been here, you'd have seen how. The sparks flew six feet. Mr. Mitchell. Oh. Oh, he was here. Yeah. Sending a message? No, he was talking to New York. Do you by any chance remember the name of the party? Yeah, it was uh, Jim. Jim, uh... Fletcher. Anything else you'd like to know? Uh, you will pardon my rudeness. Oh, that's all right, Skip. It wasn't a secret anyway. Did you get your message through? I tried to tell I him. was not sleepy, and since I have made the trip several times, I thought I would come in and talk to the radio operator. Oh, you've made the trip several times, huh? Ever meet Joe here before? Uh, no. Okay. He is a new one. I see. Talk and you're not sleepy. I'm not sleepy either. Come on. A splendid idea. How about this? Where we won't wake the other passengers. If, uh, if you don't mind, let us return to our own seats. Uh, it is later than I thought, and quite suddenly I, I am sleepy. All right. Coffee? No, thank you. open the rest of the night, but everything seems quiet. By morning, we're over France. Good morning. Good morning, senor. Did I miss breakfast? Yes. <laughs> you were sleeping so soundly, I thought I'd not bother you. The steward has said you can ring if you want some now. Oh, a cup of coffee would be nice. We, we are almost within sight of Paris. Yeah, we should be landing pretty soon. <laughs> you weren't the only sleepyhead that missed breakfast. Oh? Who else is sleepy? Mr. Gramati. Gramati? Yeah. What's the matter? Keep everybody away from this section. Where's his seatmate? She's in the lounge. All right, find another place for her. Anybody ask you anything, he died of a heart attack. Yes. Uh, one moment, Senor Mitchell. I will take charge here. I am trained in such matters. You are not. What could a newspaper man know about criminal investigation? Perhaps this may be of interest to you. Umberto Grimati. Italian... Grimati? Si, Grimati. That was the real Lorenzo. Lieutenant Grimati and I exchanged credentials when we land. No one is allowed off the plane until the French police arrive. They take names, addresses, and statements. At their request, the lieutenant and I remain. In a few minutes, we will go to the Surete. By then, the autopsy report will be ready. Ostas. 
Here's the passenger manifest you asked for. You may go, mademoiselle. Be seated, please. Now, messieurs, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, you saw our credentials. Oh, certainly more. But why were you both interested in the dead man? Uh, Lorenzo was a newspaper man who discovered the identities of the Americans who financed the Mafia, the Black Hand, in my country. You were assigned by your government to guard it. See. Si. Why did you not then sit beside him? He would not permit it. At first, he would not accept any police protection. But then my government decided not to issue him a passport unless he agreed to the exchange of identities. Then why are you here, Monsieur Michel? <laughs> I wasn't informed of the switch of identities. I was guarding the wrong man. My government should have told you of the change. Our mistake cost him his life. What now, messieurs? This man dies over the ocean. Who has jurisdiction? The French, the Italians, or the Americans? Well, Lieutenant, let's pool it and take it from there. That will not be necessary. If the French police do not apprehend the murderer, we will. Now that Lorenzo is dead, I suppose you will be taking the next train back to the States. I suppose so. That is the smart thing for you to do. This case is no longer any concern of yours. If there are any further developments, I will take care of them myself. Well, messieurs, Lorenzo was stabbed with a sharp instrument which penetrated the heart. Death was in stand. Whoever killed the man was very clever. The court was open when he was stabbed. Then was closed to cover the tiny wound caused by the murder weapon. Our monsieur le doctors are convinced he was killed with an instrument resembling a, a, an ice pick. Thank you, Lieutenant. Senor Mitchell, I'm sorry your trip was so unsuccessful. I hope we shall meet again. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I must report this to my government immediately. Lieutenant, do you got any doubt about that guy? Pardon moi, mais non, monsieur. I have no reason to doubt him. His shield carries the Italian crest. I've seen dime store badges that would fool a sheriff's office. Well, oui, Monsieur Michel, Rome is very pretty this time of year. Yeah. I've got a ticket all paid for. I'll take care of things here. Thanks. <laughs> I head for the Paris depot and board the Rome Express. It pulls out around sunset. Senor, Senor Mitchell. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, I thought you would be on your way to New York. I am, a long way. Uh, you remember our friend from Texas, Mr. Matson? Indeed oh, I do. How Very are you? nice to see you again, Mr. Mitchell. Look, you boys got something to talk about. I'll just... Uh... Not at all. Sit down. <laughs> see, I'm rather curious as to... Well, why you're going to Rome. I thought all you Texans were in the oil business. <laughs> he is in the oil business, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, I'm probably the only Texan that don't take oil out of Texas. I bring it in. <laughs> well, at least that's a switch. You bring oil into Texas. Yeah, olive oil. You see, I'm an importer. Well, now that everything's straightened out, I'd sure like to buy you boys a drink. There's a club car right on back of this one. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Contessa. This is a pleasant surprise. Oh, how nice to see you again. I suppose you've been off on another one of your manhunts. Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, Countess Todeska, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Matson. Mr. Matson. Well, it's about time we made friends, Countess. Here, I got the compartment right next to yours. We're practically neighbors. <laughs> you know, all my friends call me Tex, and I'd sure like to have you call me Tex, because I like to count how you among you my friends. <laughs> Would you do us the honor of joining us? Well, thank you so much for your invitation. I, I'm sure I'd enjoy talking with you gentlemen, but I'm very tired. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll return to my compartment. And if you gentlemen will excuse me, I think I'll escort the Countess back to her compartment.
thank you so much for your kindness mr mitchell and now i'll excuse you i'm sure your friends are waiting for your return i'm going to let them wait you know it isn't every day that i get a chance to meet a real life countess uh may i sit down please do oh dear what have you done i seem to have stuck myself with something How stupid of me to leave my knitting on the seat. Uh, sit down, Mr. Mitchell. And do not pretend innocence. I know what you are thinking. You mind if I smoke? On second thought, I don't think I want a cigarette. Please be quiet. Now it is I must think. You'll never get away with it. <laughs> this time, Mr. Mitchell, there will be nobody as evidence. Well, doggone if I haven't left my wallet in my compartment. Oh, please don't bother. I will get these. No, you don't. I'll just step back in the next car and get mine. It'll only take a minute. things. What about the Italian policeman? I left him in a club car. Suppose he comes looking for Mr. Mitchell. We can't let him. I'll entertain him until the club car closes. And after he retires, we'll get rid of Mitchell. Why not right now? No. He knows that Mitchell's here. Would you mind telling me how we'll pass the time until then? Sure. You'll sit as quiet as a mouse. Because if you move, this kid's a regular Annie Oakley. I'd settle for gin rummy. That's it. I'll tell him you're playing gin. Thank you, sir. The club car is closing. Would you care for something else? Not for me. How about you, Lieutenant? No, no, thank you. I think I shall find Mr. Mitchell and have one last cigarette with him. I don't think it'd be appreciated, Lieutenant. I think they're enjoying each other's company. You saw them? Sure. My compartment's right next to the counters. They were playing gin rummy for half a cent a point. In that case, I think I shall retire to my compartment. I'm more tired than I realized. That's a good idea. You know, I think I'll take 40 winks myself. Followed at hook, line, and sinker. Now, as soon as the steward goes by, we'll know the club car's deserted. There's a back door to the club car? Yeah, right behind the steward's pantry. All right, Mitchell. Come on. Uh, you know, if it's a drink you want, I'd... Play it smart, Mitchell. Just do as I say. and held him while she stabbed him with a knitting needle. You'll have to prove that. Your attempt on Mr. Mitchell is evidence enough. Tough luck, Tex. Now the Black Hand will have to look someplace else for money to finance their operations. And oh, thanks for delivering my message. Message? I delivered a message? Of course. How else would I have known to come back here to the club car? 
I happen to know Mr. Mitchell does not play cards. How then could he be playing gin rummy with the Countess? <laughs> you know, you can get into a lot of trouble gambling, Tex. 